Hi there. So this exercise will show you how you can do the Sheen Cole gluing and printing all in one step. In the other video we showed how you could glue the paper down onto your printing paper first and then print your relief block on top of that. This one is a, an alternate method that works really well if you have a very smooth plate that you're printing from. So it works great with the monotype plates and it would work well if you have a relief block that's mostly still the raised surface, like if you were using the scratch foam or if you had built a plate out of um, the craft foam and most of the surface was still intact, uh, this would work really well to do it all in one step. And I'll kind of talk you through what I've done so far. So I've planned out, I think what we'll end up using is this cutting mat as my monotype plate. And that way I can ink a smaller rectangle without getting ink all the way to the edge of my plate so it'll be easier to handle the plate without putting fingerprints on the image. And then I have a rough sketch here. Now as I was working out the sketch I was thinking I want the umbrella part, the fabric part, to be my Sheen Collet layer. So I went ahead and cut a piece of that same paper that we used for the other demo and it should fit in this shape. Um, as I was cutting it, I thought, well, just in case I glue the wrong side of it, it would be nice if the shape is absolutely symmetrical. So I, I um, folded it in half and cut both sides exactly the same, which means it no longer lines up exactly with my rough sketch, which was not very symmetrical. So just to make sure that the paper shape matches my monotype shape as exactly as possible, I'm actually going to tape this to my template just temporarily until I get my plate inked up and then once I'm sure that I've made my reduction plate um, in just the right spots then I can peel this off and actually put glue on it and use it as um, we're printing the, the block but I think just to save myself time so that I don't have to completely redraw my sketch I'm just going to tape the actual Sheen Collet paper right underneath my monotype plate. So that's all taped down. This I have a transparency that I've taped to my um, basic rectangle shape and um, then I'll tape the monotype plate right on top of that so it's not shifting around relative to the image so I'll just use a little bit of painters tape to temporarily hold that while I'm inking it and um, we'll use that to print off of. So remember the image is going to be backwards the umbrella will end up on this side I think I like that compositionally better so it's backwards from the way I want it to be in the final print um, as I'm inking it up. I've mixed up some, a mixture of transparent base, the black Akua ink, and the, um, it's like a phthalo blue. And hopefully I can get a nice, thin, even layer. I tried this once already and the ink was so opaque that I couldn't really see the image through there. So I want to try to apply it a little bit thinner this time so that I can still see my sketch through the layer of ink and we'll kind of work it out so that there's not the lap marks from the roller. I don't mind if there's a little bit of an organic texture to it but I don't want to have these stripey textures so I'm going to kind of try to feather out the, the one thing I didn't think about as I was taping that Sheen Collet paper underneath there is it could create a raised area that might make it a little bit harder to get a nice even roll across the plate. My um, monotype plate's a pretty thin piece of plastic so it might actually, I might be able to feel those lumps through there. If you have a thicker plexiglass plate you won't have that problem. I'm going to try to just use a little bit lighter touch and see if I can get rid of some of these lap marks here. Well, it doesn't seem to be making a whole lot of difference, so I'll have to kind of do it as I'm wiping the plate. And um, so I guess the thing I want to focus on the most is probably getting that umbrella in the right spot. So I'm going to start out with just some scraps of t-shirt, and I want the underside of the umbrella to stay a little bit darker, like it's in shadow, compared to the part that's up above. I 
want each uh, plane of the umbrella to have a little bit different value. I don't want to completely wipe out the lights. I want some planes to be a little bit brighter than others so it feels like they're made out of fabric. And then I think I don't want a whole lot of information under here. I might do a little bit of rubbing just to suggest that there's some plane changes there, but I don't want this to be nearly as light. Just a little suggestion there. And I think what I'll do is lift out some of these reflections on the light on the water. So I, I want to have a few puddles feel like they're reflecting some of the light from the sky. Okay. And then I want to keep some darks around the top part of the but still try to make it feel like there's something back there, a plant or some kind of texture there. <coughs> and down here I want this to be a little bit lighter so we can see the shape of the underside of the umbrella stand out as a silhouette a little bit.
So I'll be using a paper stencil to kind of keep these edges nice and clean. Um, or maybe not. Maybe I'll just try to be real precise here if I wipe. All right, I'm gonna take a break, wash my hands real well. I'm also gonna unattach the paper underneath there so we can get some glue on there. I'll be right back. All right, I've cleaned up my ink. I've put away anything that's kind of getting in my way. I've also taken a minute to dampen my paper. So I used a really fine mist of water on both sides of some Canson Edition paper, and I've placed it in a plastic bag for a few minutes to soften up a little bit so that it can do a better job receiving the ink on the monotype plate. I've also got Nori paste. This is what we'll be using to do the Chine Collé. And I've cut a couple of scraps of mat board thin enough that I can fit it down in here. Um, you can also use your putty knife if you've got something that's narrow enough to dig out some of that paste. There's a thin plastic layer on the paste when you first get it, so be sure to peel that off first. And we'll just scoop out a small amount we don't need a lot. You can apply it with this small strip, or I, I tend to like to apply a little bit wider um, amount, or yeah, you know, on a wider piece of mat board. So let me just pull this out of the way for a little bit. Let's see what we're doing here. All right, so I've got paste distributed across this edge, and I like to start at the middle and work my way toward the edges rather than approaching from the edge so that I don't get paste underneath my paper. And look to make sure that you've covered all the edges. That's really critical. So the, um, you don't want to have any dry spots along the edge that are going to peel up. Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to put the paste side down so I don't stick my paper on there. So we'll bring our monotype plate back in. And the goal is to position this as carefully as we can, right where it needs to be on top of the image. So again, I want this is the side that I want to print. So I'm going to lay it face down on the ink so that when everything's flipped over, it'll end up showing. Okay, so it's in position. Then let me get this paste surface out of the way. We'll bring out our dampened printmaking paper and position it on our registration jig. And then hinge it down so that we can take a peek at our progress as we burnish and still be able to get our paper back in the right spot. Then we'll put a piece of uh, parchment paper over as a buffer so that the wooden spoon doesn't smear the back of the damp paper. And then I'm just going to take my time transferring as thoroughly as I can. I'm feeling for the edge of the plate so I can make sure I get out there toward the edges of the image. And I try not to let that parchment paper wrinkle. I'm holding it taut as I'm burnishing in between my fingers there. So we can kind of peek as we as we go and see how the progress is going. It seems to be transferring pretty well. I'm going to spend a few more minutes burnishing the whole thing and then we'll peel back and see how it's looking. All right, I think I've burnished as much as I can. So let's take a look and see how it transferred. So if for some reason your Chine Collet paper peels up in any spots, it's really easy to just add a little bit of paste. So 
or you can kind of tap it down. It could be that just the friction of the paper was trying to pull it up. Um, I wouldn't rub across it though because remember this ink is still wet. So it's an okay start. I feel it's like it's pretty washed out. I think I need some more darks in here somewhere. So I could go back in with my monotype plate and design some areas that strengthen the contrast a little bit more, maybe bring out some definition in the handle or something like that. But um, this would be a good background layer for some more uh, development there. And you can see how the sheen collet piece really helps highlight that focal point of the, the umbrella. But yeah, I think I need some more darks maybe right through here to help kind of anchor with a horizontal shape and bring a little more detail out here. I might even do um, a little bit of hand coloring if it's just a small amount of information that I need. It can be a combination of monotype and some mixed media where you just draw with some pastel or, or chalk or something like that um, to add one more layer of information. So this is a little bit damp. I will uh, put some newsprint on here and then put it between two blotters and put some weight on it so that it dries nice and flat. And then I can try to rework the image with another layer of monotypes or a little bit of hand coloring.